Good morning, welcome to our service for Sunday the 27th of December 2020. Holy Communion for Christmas in the Woodbridge Group of Churches here in North Wiltshire. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The Word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. service with a time of confession. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and Eternal God. Amen. Our Bible reading is from the first 
chapter of the first letter of John. 1 John 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another from the blood of Jesus, his son, which purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to share with you uh, this morning a reflection by Tom Wright, former Bishop of Durham, uh, on that from his book, um, Early Christian Letters for Everyone. This is what he has to say about the first four verses of that passage. I've seen the future and it works. This notorious statement was made by an American journalist, Lincoln Steffens, in 1919. He had just returned from a visit to the recently established Soviet Union, formed on Marxist principles after the Russian Revolution had swept away the old aristocracy and its method of government. Steffens was echoing the hopes of millions in Europe and America. Perhaps this entirely new ideal this new way of ordering human society was the answer to all the old problems of tyranny and oppression. Perhaps this was indeed the future, the thing that would come to the rest of humanity as a great revelation, a great display of enlightened progress. We would all catch up one day. But for the moment, Stephens at least had had a glimpse into the future and declared that it worked. Subsequent history has revealed, of course, that this system only worked in the sense of achieving certain ends at the most enormous cost of human lives. The Soviet system, like other revolutionary regimes, found it necessary to imprison or kill millions of its own subjects, never mind enslaving several adjacent nations. When it finally came crashing down under its own dead weight in the late 1980s, it became apparent that it had been rotten and hollow inside for many years, perhaps for many decades, perhaps all along. The problems it caused are still with us. But that sense of a glimpse into the future, of an advanced display of the new world waiting to be born, however tragically mistaken in that case, is exactly the picture John is offering at the start of this short but glowing letter. The ancient Jews believed that world history was divided into two periods or ages. There was the present age, which was full of misery and suffering, injustice and oppression. And there was the age to come, the time when God would sort it all out, would put everything right and would in particular rescue his people from the evil they'd suffered. Unfortunately, the word for age has often been translated as eternal or eternity, which has given some readers the idea that John and other early Christian writers who refer to God's new age were thinking of something eternal in the sense of purely spiritual. Something that had nothing to do with the world of space and time and matter. That's what people often hear when they read the phrase eternal life, which is what most translations have of verse 2. But this is mistaken. John, like Paul and indeed like Jesus himself, is thinking of the new age, the age to come which God has promised. This is the future and it really does work. 
and God has provided an advanced display of this future. God has kept the age to come under wraps, as it were, waiting to reveal it at the right time. But the secret at the heart of the early Christian movement was that the age to come had already been revealed. The future had burst into the present, even though the present time wasn't ready for it. The word for that future was life, life as it was meant to be, life in its full, vibrant meaning, a life which death tried to corrupt, thwart and kill, but a life which had overcome death itself and was now on offer to anyone who wanted to come and take it. Life itself had come to life, had taken the form of a human being, coming into the present from God's future, coming to display God's coming age. And the name of that life in person is, of course, Jesus. That is the very heart of what John wants us to say. Of course, the very idea of God's new life becoming a person and stepping forward out of the future into the present is so enormous, so breathtaking, that a tone of wonder, of hushed awe and reverence becomes appropriate. This is what we find in these open, opening verses. That which was from the beginning. Pause and think about that for a moment. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have gazed at. Your own eyes? You didn't just glimpse it, you gazed at it? Yes, says John. And what's more, our hands have handled. You touched this? This life? You touched him? You handled him? Yes, repeats John. We heard, we saw, we touched this life. We knew him. We were his friends. And we still are his friends. Once the future has come into the present, the present is transformed forever. The life has been displayed, has been put on show for all to see, although some still prefer not to look. And we who saw it, we who knew it, we who knew him, are now like witnesses in a law court, speaking to a surprised jury about the strange things which we have encountered. Oh, we can talk about Jesus and what he did and said. As John says at the end of his gospel, if you try to write it, all down, the world would explode with the books that would be written. But when you reflect on what it means, then you have to say this, we have seen the future and it is full of life and light and joy and hope. The rest of the letter explores all of that. For the moment, John explains his purpose in writing. Those who have seen this life and have been captured by its beauty and promise find that they have come to belong to a new kind of family, a fellowship, as we sometimes say. Now, the word he uses at this point is sometimes used of a, used of a business partnership, but he means much more than that. It can also refer to the sharing of particular goods or benefits between people that comes, that comes into it, as we shall see. But John means much more than that. He seems to mean, as he stretches the words to fit the new reality, as early Christians often had to, he seems to mean that there is a kind of life, a quality of life, which is God's very own life, which God himself is now sharing with the people who have heard and seen the life come to life called Jesus. Indeed, John sees God's own life as already a shared fellowship the fellowship between Father and Son. Jesus, as Messiah, has been marked out as Son of God, both in the sense that this was his rightful royal title as Israel's true king, and in a deeper, richer sense, previously hardly suspected or imagined, but now celebrated by his followers as the only possible way to explain the extraordinary things that they had seen, heard and handled. As his life and death and resurrection demonstrated, John, Jesus, sorry, was clearly 
the life in person of God's coming age. He was, in fact, God's own new life, both the life of God himself and the gift of life from God to the world. The earliest Christians quickly seized upon the words father and son as the simplest and clearest way of saying the unsayable at this point, that there was a common life, a deep sharing of inner reality between God and Jesus, enough to take your breath away at the thought of such a human being, and indeed of such a God. But it doesn't stop there. It gets even more breathtaking. This deep sharing of inner reality, this fellowship between father and son has been extended. It extends to all those who came to know, love and trust Jesus while he was alive. While he was, so to speak, on display as God's public unveiling of the coming life. And now, this it seems is the point of the letter, this sharing, this fellowship is open to others too to others who didn't have the chance to meet Jesus during his period of public display. This sharing can be, and is being, extended to anyone and everyone who hears the announcement about Jesus. They can come into fellowship with those who did see, hear and handle him. And they in turn are in fellowship with the Father and the Son, with the two who are themselves the very bedrock and model for what fellowship in this fullest sense really means. It may seem strange that simply telling people about Jesus is the appointed means by which such a momentous thing as this fellowship can be extended to include new members. But John is very much aware that the opening move in the whole game was made by God himself as an act not of silent display but of verbal communication. Jesus was not only life in person, he was, verse 1, the word of life, life as word, life turned into speech, God's speech, God's self-communication to his people and through them to the wider world. In John's Gospel, of course, he refers to Jesus simply as the word, the word who became flesh. The point is this. God has spoken in Jesus and God now speaks through the words which Jesus' friends speak and write about him to others also in the intention and hope that they will come to share this same fellowship. That is the point of the letter. That should be our prayer as we read it. And so let's pray. God, will you speak to us through your word and will you speak through us as your word into the world? Amen.
hearts to human hearts the blessings of his hand no together to celebrate the good news of Jesus birth let's speak out boldly what we believe we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named we believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with love we believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high we believe in one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. As we celebrate this festival time, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So, with gifts of bread and wine in front of us. We prepare to share these gifts virtually, but together. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father, to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup. He gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again, 
and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So we come together with faith. We receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood which he shed for us. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. God our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen.
and may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. We'll see you again next year. Let's hope that next year is a brighter one than this one has been. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God.